नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय श्रीमद भागवतम कंटो थ्री चैप्टर नाइनटीन विच टेक्स ट्रांसलेशन एंड कॉमेंट्री बाय इस डिवाइन ग्रेस शुल्क इसी भक्ति वेद अंतर्स्थान को पार आउंड आ चाहे अविस्वान ऑल राइट आई चैंट इट मैन क्रातो वेरामता मेशा देवेशु दुर्वाग्रहा धर्माव्यति करो यत्र पाखंडायर इंद्र निर्मिताय Maharaj Prithu was performing uh, sacrifices for the pleasure of Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu is known as Yagya, Yagya Pati, Yagya Bhuk. He has many names, and Yagya is also one of his names because he is not different from his sacrifice. Yagya Pati means the master of the sacrifice, or the lord of the sacrifice. Yagya Bhuk means the enjoyer of the sacrifice. Generally, materialistic people they perform sacrifices. With the aim of satisfying Lord Vishnu, so that they can get some satisfactory result from Him also. Specifically, by performing these sacrifices, one can be elevated to the heavenly planets. And if someone can perform a hundred sacrifices on the scale that Maharaj Prithu was about to perform them, then he could attain to the position of Indra. Indra's one name is Shaktakratu, means who has performed one hundred such sacrifices. Now, Maharaj Prithu wasn't. Particularly interested in attaining the post of Indra, as a pure devotee of Krishna, he was performing sacrifices for the pleasure of Lord Vishnu, without desiring whatever fruitive results could be attained from such a sacrifice. He was also performing these sacrifices just to set an example for people in general that they should follow the Vedic path, and he was also performing these sacrifices as because as a king one should perform such sacrifices to. Invoke the blessings of Lord Vishnu for the welfare of the citizens. However, Indra misunderstood his intention, as he has a habit of doing. Because Indra is a devotee, he is a highly elevated person. It requires much piety to attain the position of Indra. However, he is a devotee with material aspirations also. Such devotees, they are given the opportunity to serve the Lord within the material creation, and at the same time. Fulfill their material desires by becoming an administrative demigod. They have some power and position, and the opulence and respect that go with it. Now, Indra was very much attached to this position, and he presumed that Maharaj Prithu was also aspiring for such a position. Therefore, he was prepared to stop Maharaj Prithu by any means, not even considering what the later consequences might be. That it would be disastrous for the world in general. Just like these people, they've invented different kinds of weapons. It's like the, the nuclear weapons. Uh, the effect on the world is disastrous. There's so many weapons like that. These the mines are planted, and even long after the war is over, the whole area cannot be used because it's full of mines. So this is a very uh, short-sighted policy to make some plan. Based on some immediate advantage, without seeing the future consequences, and specifically, Indra was introducing an, an irreligious system in the name of religion, which uh, certainly will have disastrous results in society. Because if people think that they are being religious, but they are not following the actual path of religion, then their religious sentiment is misguided, and in the name of religion, they go to hell. If people think that they are following a religious path, But it's not actually religion. Then their religious sentiment is misguided. In the name of religion, they end up going to hell. Yeah. Oh, you said that. Okay. So uh, this we see throughout the world, especially in the modern age, that adjustments have been made in the path of religion. Religion is that which is given by God. Dharmam tu sakshad bhagavat pranitam. Religion is that which is. Uh, Given by God, that's the same thing. It is not possible for anyone else 
to give the path of religion except God. Even if someone is highly intelligent and pious and qualified in so many ways, he cannot say what is the path of religion. Only God can do that. And those who are actually pious and intelligent and authorized, they simply repeat what is the message of God as given in the scriptures. Now, God, he gives his message in different places and times and cultures, different circumstances. And therefore we have different religions such as Christianity, Buddhism, Islam, Hinduism. And all these religious paths have a purpose, which is ultimately to elevate people to the platform of pure, unmotivated devotional service to Krishna. Unfortunately, people change the message in the course of time. Just like in Christianity, we see that uh, apparently Lord Jesus was a vegetarian who uh, propagated reincarnation. And he certainly wasn't a drunkard. However, in the course of time, as Christianity was spreading, it was thought for political reasons, it might be better to allow meat eating and drinking alcohol and not teach people about reincarnation. And in this way, um, that the Christianity will not conflict with any of the interests of the state, and many people will be able to accept it. And that's actually what happened. Christianity spread very widely. It was, uh, eating meat and drinking wine in the name of Jesus. So that people think a good Christian cannot be a vegetarian. Isn't it? Many people think like that. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you have to be a real Russian, and you have to be a real Christian and a real meat eater. Yes, to eat real meat. Real meat? Real meat, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it says in the Bible that God gave dominion of the animals to man. Dominion means power over. Uh, it, means, I, I, it means more than that. But, uh, <laughs> ruling over, something like that. So it's, uh, along comes a saint to interpret the Bible. God gave the uh, power of the, of, over the animals to man. Well, that means... He gave the animals for us to enjoy by eating them. It doesn't mean that. Just like you can imagine, if I, if I have to go away for some days, and I leave my child in your care, and you say, please look after him. Then you come back and say, okay, where's my child? You said, well, I looked after him. I love children. Roasted. <laughs> so, is it a very good policy? So this is their misunderstanding. Because actually religion means to give up sense gratification and surrender to Krishna. People want to feel religious. God is in my heart. They want to feel religious. God is in my heart. Jesus loves me. I, I pray to him and I have this warm feeling comes over me. And I not in any system you will find. Like just like in Buddhism, there's some myth that the last thing that Lord Buddha ate was some pigs. Meat. So that's the license for all Buddhists to eat everything that moves. Buddhists, if you, if, you, if you don't want to eat breakfast, I'll tell you the kind of thing that Buddhists like to eat. In so-called Hinduism also, we find that uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the last century, there was so much attack on Hinduism by the British, Thank so you. they tried to make some reform system called Brahma, Brahmaism, some kind of compromise between Christianity and Hinduism. Mm -hmm. Famous saint, so-called, who is actually a great demon, <laughs> saw that all the Hindu groups, they're all disagreeing with each other, all pro pro propagating different philosophies, so he had a brilliant solution. He said, Jyotal Mat Tatal Pat. Whatever opinion you have, that path is okay. All paths lead to the same goal. What a wonderful philosophy. And to prove it, he, he passed some days as a Christian, and he spent some days practicing Islam. And when he was practicing Christianity and Islam, he did it very seriously, following all the customs of those religions, such as eating cow's meat. And then he became a great self-realized saint, and preach to everybody, do whatever you like, the highest realization.
And then his famous disciple, who was, who was known as Vivek Ananda, which means one who takes pleasure in discrimination, but who had no discrimination whatsoever. Maybe he could discriminate which kinds of tobacco were better than others. So he came up with the wonderful philosophy that it doesn't matter what you eat, it, it's your consciousness that matters. If your consciousness is good, then you can eat anything. Why put so much emphasis on food? And to demonstrate it, he founded a society of meat-eating monks <laughs> who run chicken farms to maintain their activities. Really? Who run chicken farms oh. to maintain their activities. And it's all going on in the name of religion. They're very much cheating people. What happened, I mean, that particular order, like everything material, it's kind of fading away. It's not very popular nowadays. What do you order? They are Ram Krishna mission. No, it's I said this in Bengal, it still tear me to pieces, but at least in Moscow we can say it <laughs> straightforwardly. So Their that? institution is, is losing popularity. It's not very prominent anymore. But because uh, their ideas have become so much widely spread, it has opened the door for all kinds of charlatans to produce chaos in human society. Cheaters. We see that in the history of Vedic culture, there were many different paths, no doubt. But everyone had to discuss their philosophy on the basis of the Vedas. And if anyone was defeated in it, first of all, they'd have to know the, Ve the Vedas, the Vedanta. And then, if they were defeated in discussion, they would have to become the disciple of their pageants. That was the system. All the Acharyas, Shankara Acharya, Ramanuja, Vallabha Acharya, Madhva Acharya, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they traveled, they discussed on the basis of scripture, and in this way, they spread their culture. Because it is understood that the Vedas, they are, that is Shabda Brahma, everyone accepted, this is spiritual knowledge. But because this idea has become spread, that in any path's okay, whatever you, whatever, any path's okay, that in the land where Buddhism was rejected, because it was not Vedic, now we have all kinds of bizarre speculations. Bizarre means bizarre. <laughs> French word, yeah. Strange. I don't know the etymology, but anyway, it means and strange. That, uh, I mean, if you want to have a catalog of Hinduism, it's, it would be entertaining at the same time. It uh, would make you weep. In India, preaching all the time, people come up and say, well, what do you think about so-and-so? People all the time, members of the public come and say, well, what do you think about, or I'm a follower of so-and-so. And even if we never heard their name, we know they're bogus. It's just different varieties of bogusness, that's all. Some, some Baba is very popular because he, he has some vow never to touch the ground. So he lives in some hut on stilts. Does this make you self-realize and advance? And if he has to go anywhere, he has to be carried by people. I mean, anyway, there are so many <laughs> bogus things. You pro you probably you never heard of this, I don't know, this Bhagwan Rajneesh who, who died, fortunately. Very popular. Because he, uh, he recommended that you have to, you have to, uh, indulge all your emotions. Indulge, uh, indulge means. Just like if you feel sleepy, go to sleep. <laughs> of course, just going to sleep isn't so bad, but his thing was, if you feel like sex, just do it. <laughs> yeah. This is supposed to be Vedanta. It's such rascal. The Asadev came and after so much philosophy, the conclusion was just live like a dog. There are so many things. Tree temples. Kshamandir. <laughs> the tree is God. Plant trees. <laughs> Tree temple and what, what else? The tree is God. Worship trees as God. And so many. You've heard, you've heard of Sai Baba. I know you've heard of Sai There's already two new imitations. There's two 
boys Sai Babas waiting for him to die to become the latest incarnation. Such rascaldom. So anyway, how does this apply to you here in Suharevo, you may wonder. The thing is that we have to follow scripture very carefully. Don't deviate, don't speculate. Even followers of great Vaishnav gurus, if they don't follow, they can be, be cause so much disturbance. There's uh, one follower of Jagannath Das Babaji started one of the biggest upper sampradayas in Bengal and Orissa. And in many ways, many of the things they do are nice. Renovated many of the holy places. They have published many books. Many of their followers, especially previously, not so much now, many of their followers came from very high-class backgrounds. Chant the holy names constantly. The only thing is they don't chant the Maha Mantra. They made up their own mantra. And that's where the problem came. They thought that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he taught us his Maha Mantra, but now we have a better mantra. So whatever else they do, because of that mistake, everything is spoiled. Shruti Smriti Purana Adi Pancharatra Vidhing Vina Aikanta Ki Hare Bhakti Utpati Aiva Kalpati. Rupa Goswami has very hmm, wonderfully analyzed that if we don't exactly follow the path of Krishna consciousness as given in all the scriptures, then our so called devotional service will simply be a disturbance in society. That we are, in the name of Bhakti, if you teach something else, even slightly different, it's a disturbance. You see, then it's a, it causes a great disturbance because it confuses what is the actual path of religion. You see, if someone is interested in some material activity and they propagate that, well, that's all right. I mean, it's not all right, but at least it doesn't cause confusion. There's a straightforward materialist. But if someone mixes that up with devotional service, it becomes very confusing. For instance, uh, not so much now, but previously there used to be many sex cults in the name of Gorya Vaishnavism. Because they said, well, Krishna had Ras Leela, so we're devotees of Krishna, we should also have Ras Leela. And uh, because of this, many people were misled to think that Gorya Vaishnavism is a, is a very bad thing. So we shall have to be very careful to stick to the path given by the Acharyas. And particularly, we should follow our founder, Acharya Srila Prabhupada. Even after Srila Prabhupada, there may be followers who were following nicely at one point, but then they introduced different things. And we've actually seen this in our society, that uh, one of the earliest followers of Srila Prabhupada was very much respected after some time, it, after Prabhupada's departure, he introduced some speculative mixture of Christianity and Krishna consciousness. And someone else introduced some introduction of drug taking and Krishna consciousness, which of course was not introduced by Srila Prabhupada. So we shall have to stick very strictly to the path given by Srila Prabhupada, who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's representative. Mm, sorry. Who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's representative, who came to fulfill Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's desire preaching Krishna Conscious in every town and village of the world. So we shall have to stick very strictly to the path given us by Srila Prabhupada, the philosophy and even the methodology. Prabhupada gave us a very simple, clear, straightforward path to follow. Chant Hare Krishna, read his books, distribute his books, take prasadam, all these different things Prabhupada gave. There's no need to invent anything new. Whatever we need to become Krishna conscious, Srila Prabhupada has already given. If we follow that, our path back to Godhead will be simple and clear. So let us do that. Let us not be so crazy as to attempt to introduce something of our own speculation. Otherwise, there will be disaster. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any question? I, didn't, I don't remember saying that in the class. Yes. Anyway, well, if we use gypsy-like trickiness, we'll get a reputation like gypsies. You want to have a reputation like gypsies? Yeah, it's a sensitive situation. The thing is that uh, if they're worshipping deities who are worshipped by Lord Chaitanya's associates, then, then uh, for one reason or other, Lord Chaitanya has his... Uh, that those deities are accepting their offerings means they haven't rejected them from the service, which they could do. We take Jagannath Prasad, even though mm, many of the priests of Jagannath are fish eaters, 
There may be some special rules in the dham. On the other, but the dhams are actually very dangerous places in many ways because uh, it's like dham is concentrated. It's very concentrated. If you, it's a very good place for doing intensive hearing and chanting. But there's also a concentration of so many bogus things. So we should be very careful who we associate with in the dhams because mostly everyone will give you some kind of bogus philosophy. Did everyone hear the question? Just listening. Yeah. You know, Hare Krishna Mahamantra is the is sacrifice, it's the Yuga Dharma, is the name of Krishna directly. So even without knowledge, you will get results. Prabhupada gave the example, even if a child touches the fire, he may not know the he may not know how or why, but he gets burned. However, to remain steady in chanting Hare Krishna and to avoid offenses, it is necessary to hear about Krishna, to get knowledge of Krishna. Pure chanting of the of the holy name. That that means you get the same effect means you can by chanting without knowledge you can get up to Nama Bhas. But without the purification that comes from regularly hearing and chanting about Krishna, no one can attain to the stage of Shuddha Nam. That is an interesting point. I was thinking of speaking on this, but then we went off in another direction. This is a very instructive point actually. That even if, even although something may be right, we may not do it because under certain circumstances it may produce the wrong effect. It may be the wrong thing for the situation. Just like I told that story the other day of the Brahmin who didn't want to tell any lies. So basically that's a good thing, but in that circumstance it wasn't a good thing. Now, Prithu Maharaj is doing the right thing, but Brahma asked him to stop out of deference or respect to Indra, that Indra is superior to Prithu and he want, he didn't want Prithu to do this, so Prithu, out, as a sign of respect, should stop that. Now, another thing is that uh, Indra, he was, he was like incorrigible. He wasn't going to... If he had... If Prithu went on with his sacrifices, Indra would go on making more irreligious systems. No. So considering that also, uh, Brahma thought it's better. I can I can deal with Prithu Maharaj. He's more reasonable. Now it's just like Vishwanath Thakur says that anyone who chants this Gurvashtaka during the Brahma Mahurta loudly, he goes back to Godhead. So we should definitely do that. Sometimes uh, we have apartments in the city, and if we do that, the neighbors don't appreciate it. And in fact, they not only don't appreciate it, but they make a lot of problems. So the right thing to do is chant Hare Krishna loudly, never mind the neighbors. They're wrong, but they're not likely to change and they may cause so many problems. So we'll chant softly and not disturb them. doesn't mean we're going to stop being Krishna conscious, but we'll practice it in a way, in, in deference to the particular time, place and circumstance. Is this anything to do with the class? Oh, well, if we start discussing specific deviations in our society, we can be here all day, especially in Russia. In the natural devotion, it says that one has to bring, <laughs> uh, wear the garment from Didi, but someone has an, uh, there is an opinion that Brahmachari should not do this. And is it a deviation or does it turn con contours? Shastra says Brahmachari should not wear garlands. <laughs> they can wear prasad garlands. Just like brahmacharis aren't supposed to eat nice food either. Why don't you do that? Just you can take boiled dal with no salt. You have real brahmacharis. If you do that, you won't have any brahmacharis. Unless the, at least there's at least once a week halava, they're all blue. They're all, so we offer chatur, vidha, shri, bhagavat, prasad. We offer food stuff to the deities and distribute to the devotees. And brahmacharis should not eat huge plates of halava. But if you do, you won't make too much brahmacharis. Better... Stay a devotee, take Krishna Prasadam. Now we want to take the garlands off of the deity. Not to decorate our bodies so that we can show ourselves off, but as an act of respect to the deities. Sometimes they wear it on the ear. So. Yeah, that's <laughs> unusual. Well, if you want shock treatment, you could pray to Krishna. Please put me in a situation that will help me to concentrate more. So if you get plenty of difficulties and danger, and problems, then you're more likely to concentrate. Go on Sankirtan, go and distribute some books. It will help you to concentrate. Oh, that's Sahaj, Sahaj Yoga. Not Sahaji, Sahaj Yoga. Yeah, so what? It's bogus. Explain. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalam, Kalo, Nastreva, 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 Gatya Ramita. Except this, it's all bogus. Jai. So, 
actually sahaj means easy and yoga means serving Krishna. So one kind of sahaj, real sahaj yoga is taking prasadam. 